In this video, we will talk about whether or not you can drill a hole or cut a notch in a glue lamb beam. And believe it or not, I found a couple of uh, websites that suggested that you can actually do so. I do not recommend it without uh, the permission of an engineer, and you get that in writing, by the way. Um, you uh, take it down to a notary, you do whatever. But, uh, I mean, just a written piece of paper might not be enough for something like this. So you might actually suggest that the engineer gets a drill and drills the hole himself or herself for this one. So a glue lamb beam usually sits on at the end of two walls. Let's go ahead and go back here, back up. Uh, usually has a uh, bearing point at the end of the walls. The information I'm going to provide you with will not... Um, work for a cantilever. They do not want you drilling holes um, in the cantilevered section of a glue lamb beam from what I gather. Now obviously without an engineer's permission. So uh, first thing I'd like to point out is this the information I received is referring to um, what an engineer would would commonly call a uniform load. This would be an equally distributed load. As you can see here we have um, let's just say these are floor joist and they're equally spaced. The beam can actually absorb um, sections of the load on this for, for something like this more uh, evenly and distribute it to the end of the wall. And the next part we're going to look at will be a concentrated load, which um, these uh, the information I'm going to share with you would not apply to also. So a concentrated load would be any part of the beam where it would not be equally distributed. You might have a beam, for example, that sits on top of the beam or attaches to it with a hanger. And then this beam supports a lot of weight uh, might be a roof. You might have a post where the post might be supporting a large beam above that would be supporting the uh, upper floor or um, roof system. This actually puts a lot of weight on one particular section of the beam and uh, might not uh, uh, well, it actually said in the in the information that I, I gathered, it actually said that this is for uniform loads only, not for concentrated loads. Now, this does not mean that you cannot contact an engineer. This does not mean that an engineer cannot design a building uh, in a way that you can drill holes through it. The information I gathered, if you need to drill a hole, let's say you need to drill a vertical hole, um, through the beam for some some type of a fixture that cannot be moved. If this is the case, the engineer can actually make the beam a little larger to compensate for that. The same way with uh, the concentrated loads. Um, you might have a concentrated load and you might need to drill a hole right underneath it for something. If that's the case, the, the beam can always be a little larger. So don't look at a building, don't watch this video and uh, say, hey, wait a minute, he said I can't do this and I can't do that. Um, it might not be the case. If you have a set of building plans from an engineer, these people uh, usually know what they're doing. And uh, um, if that's the case, you've got the green light to do that. Now, what I would also like to suggest is that if you do get something from an engineer in writing, I would also, to drill a hole in a glue lamb beam or a notch, you're not comfortable doing it, um, make sure that you lay out the exact position that you are going to drill the hole or cut the notch. Exact position that you're going to drill it on a piece of paper and uh, make sure that they understand where this hole is going or the notch and you put it in that spot. Because if you just tell the engineer, hey, I'm gonna cut the, cut the beam and they say, yeah, go ahead. And uh, you have a piece of paper that just says you can cut the beam but it does not provide a specific spot, you could be in trouble. And if you're watching this video and you have cut a notch in the beam or you're drilling a hole and you're looking for um, some good news, um, you might not find it in this video. Always, no matter what, contact an engineer um, before uh, drilling a hole or notching. To give you an idea, I worked in the business for over 30 years. I never seen anybody drill a hole or cut a notch in a glue lamb beam except for one time. They cut a, they cut a hole in a glue lamb, I mean they cut a notch 
for a gas pipe in the center of a glue lamb beam and it shut the job down. So uh, beware. Let's take a look at some suggested areas that you would be allowed to drill the holes and that would be in this area here and there is uh, something suggesting that you might need to stay away from the edge here. Um, looks like you got the, the go ahead in here and the hole sizes looks like a maximum of an inch and a half no matter what. No more than an inch and a half no matter how big the beam is what this was suggesting and the uh, or one tenth of the beam size. So if you had a beam that was 10 inches um, tall then you'd be able to drill a one inch hole in it. That would be the max. That'd be one tenth. Now I split this area up into dimensions. We have one eighth, one eighth. This would equal one quarter. And then we have one half and then we have one eighth and one eighth. The reason why I put the one eighth in here is because that's the distance you're allowed to drill here. One eighth of an inch away. From, I mean one eighth of the distance of the beam. So for example, let's just say that the beam is eight foot long to make it simple. One eighth of eight foot would be one foot. So one foot, another foot, this is two foot. Half of eight feet is four feet. This would give us four feet. And then another foot and a foot which would give us a quarter here. So this would be two feet. This would be one feet. One foot, I should say. One quarter of the distance, this is the height. Let's just say that we had a, um, trying to keep this simple here, we had a 12 inch tall glue lamb beam. One quarter of 12 inches is three inches. So we would have three inches at the height here and then this is half here and then three inches below here. So this distance here would be three inches, six inches, and then three inches. So you'd be able to drill in these areas. So, and again, this is just uh, what I gathered off the internet. This uh, does not mean you can actually do it. Um, right here is all I can say. Do not cut or notch glue lamb beams without permission from engineer. And I am not kidding about this. Here's the, the information or the words I put in to get the information drilling glue lamb beams and uh, it took me to the Roseboro site and again I try not to put copyrighted information otherwise I would uh, I'd love to share more information with you about this but on the Roseboro site if you scroll to the bottom of the page it basically said do not cut or notch glue lamb beams if you are not comfortable and I'm going to suggest that also like I said only seen it done once, it shut the job down. I have never seen it done again. Um, so my suggestion to you is if you have not cut the beam already, do not cut it, haven't cut a notch in it, do not drill a hole in this thing. If the engineer gives you permission, you had better make sure you have enough paperwork to back it up because these things aren't usually easy to replace. They're usually uh, designed um, because of the loads that are, they are going to be carrying are going to be quite heavy.